After I finished uh, recording this segment, uh, the primary segment you're going to see, um, two things happened. One, uh, groundskeepers decided to show up and start making noise in the background. So if you hear any of that, I apologize. The uh, second one is um, while I was waiting for the software to render the uh, video, I glanced over on Facebook and realized that a friend of mine, Brian McCormick, has opened up a, a Give, Send, Go account. Um, Brian uh, suffered uh, from um, mental cell lymphoma three years ago and had to have basically his immune system nuked to ashes and then um, replaced with a stem cell, um, not stem cells, um, bone marrow transplant. And although he has recovered, uh, because of this, he is no longer uh, able to do his primary profession where he was a radiology tech. So strangely enough, if you have a compromised immune system, they don't let you around sick people. And he has decided that he just sitting around and doing long-term disability and um, social security stuff is not exactly his style. So he has uh, reached out to the community to ask if anybody would and could uh, donate money to his uh his group because what he's trying to do is he's trying to get himself not just back on his feet but productive again. He uh, has a business plan. He wants to uh, start a transportation service and he's looking for up to $25,000 to help him get this started. So even though the that one month out of the year where you decide to give to charity and make donations and stuff to assuage your soul or whatever and Christmas is over, it's pretty good program and stuff. I've already made by donate donation and there will be a link in the show notes below. So hopefully you can make yours. Thank you much and on with the show. Got my smoky stick, got my bottled water. The phone is turned to do not disturb because you know people are going to disturb me. People are disturbing. Hi, my name is uh, Charles Ray Dawson. I'm the associate broker, residential sales manager for ProStar Realty. This is the Unnamed Real Estate Podcast, episode 101. It's the beginning of the new year over here. And as promised, we're going to be uh, going over wrapping up last year, uh, talking about the predictions I made earlier in the year, and coming up maybe new predictions for this year, 2023. And as I promised people on Facebook, yes, I will actually admit I was wrong. And I do that quite a bit, actually. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm opinionated, in case you've noticed, and I have very strong opinions about various things, and I can usually defend those opinions. I really like it when I just mouth off something, and then somebody like checks me and goes, "Hey, why?" And then I have to think about it. Um, so I've been spending a lot of why. What happens? You know. You know what happened in the last year? Why was something that I said in the beginning of the year? is suddenly 365 days later, not at all what I thought it was going to be. And we'll go into those details here. So but first, let's cover where we are right now this second. So you know where we're going. We're going to the numbers. This is a new view. I'm coming up with this thing, and I hope this works out better for everybody, although I am definitely going to have to figure out where to put my face when I talk like this. All right, these are the numbers for January 4th, 2023. All right, uh, Actives this week are 16,304, which is down 752, continuing the drop from mid-October. We have new listings of 987, which is up 295. So here comes the listings, boys and girls. Contracts. Remember, we used to have a, I used to have three circles here where we talked about under contract, you know, pending contracts with buyers contingencies. You know, now we're, I'm just clump them all together and it's just a contracts, right? And our contracts right now are 1,313. Uh, which is up 166, and her closings for last week was 1,358. And then at the bottom here, we're going to have the Cromford numbers. As we can see, supply is now at 72.2. Demand is at 72.3, meaning a Cromford score of 100. Remember, boys and girls, 100 is balanced. This is about as balanced you're going to see these numbers ever. I shouldn't say that because tomorrow it could be, you know, 100.1. This is a balanced market, right? So Picture it as this. You have 722 houses out there and 723 buyers for those houses. We have almost a one-to-one, -one, perfect one-to-one -one ratio at that. All right. And since those both of those numbers are in the 70s, we can we can also say that we are, you know, for every four transactions that we're supposed to be going, we're having less than three. All right. 
that uh, hurts real estate agents, it hurts escrow, it hurts appraisers, inspectors, everybody who makes their money off of real estate. We want to see that number 100 being the average amount of closings, all right, and preferably above that. But for you, the consumer, you want to see those ratios as close as possible. Now, as a seller, you're going to want to see a bunch of buyers and you be the only one on the market. As a buyer, you want a bunch of houses and being the only one out there on the market looking for people. But this is where we're at right now. Now, I tell you that to tell you this. All right. Our Crawford report numbers broken down into the regions. Look at all that green. All right. That's remember green means it is moving more towards the seller side of the equation. All right. The Crawford report number uh, was originally set up for investors. All right. Investors generally want to be on the selling side, especially the flippers. So they want to see, you know, really good seller markets. Consumers tend to want really you know buyers market but as you can see everybody improved towards the seller side of the equation except for Goodyear this is the second time Goodyear has dropped don't know what's going on in Goodyear but they they are still dropping out there um, the biggest Delta change was Paradise Valley all right and you can almost throw them out because Paradise Valley is a luxury market and it's got a smaller um, set of houses there's less houses so individual they tend to be very expensive so you the one or two or three houses selling more than last week or not selling can have this huge effect downstream. But as you can see, Paradise Valley went up um, to 43.3. Now they're at 106. You can almost throw that out. In fact, if I could control this chart, I wouldn't even track Paradise Valley because those very small amount of closings can have a huge statistical effect but Fountain Hills went up to 14% uh, uh, they're leading the top of the sellers market right now uh, Cave Creek went up 17% right bringing them out of a balanced market and into a sellers market Scottsdale stand pat zero no change right still sitting there in a very light sellers market 115 Chandler technically because like I said, if it's 110, it's it's a seller's market right there on the bubble right now. But they went up 23% change last month. Uh, Phoenix went up 18% to 102, coming out of a buyer's market and into this a balanced market. Glendale, same thing, out of a buyer's market into a balanced market. Tempe, out, buyer to balanced. Gilbert, buyer to balanced. Mesa, buyer to Barely balanced at 90, right? And then we go into what we still consider a buyer's market right there, right? Uh, Avondale, uh, even though they did jump up 35%, Peoria jumped up nine, uh, Surprise jumped up. These are all still in the, in the buyer's market side of the house. And even though Queen Creek, Maricopa, and Buckeye all experienced, uh, slide towards the seller side, they are still definitely in the buyer's market. Now, December is a very bad month to pull statistics. All right, because people do not want to look during Christmas season. They don't want to show their houses during Christmas season. So all of these numbers that you see right here, you'd have to take it into what were we seeing in October and November. And we have seen it slide more towards that balanced market. So this is a, a Crawford Market Index showing you what happened last year. All right. Actually, it was the last six months. So starting in July, you saw that we used to be balanced towards the sellers at 170. Here's your 100 line. This is your, your balance market. Anything between 110 and 90 is what we consider that balance market. And we see it drop down all right, into the buyer side, and now it's popping back up in the seller. And traditionally, November, December has always been a buyer's market kind of stuff because there's just not um, – people don't want to look before Christmas – they don't want to have to move into a house and then deal with Christmas afterwards. So this this is almost seasonality that we see right here. But the fact that we're coming out of this and it's actually started trending in this direction come just you know mid December when we should continue trending down is a really positive sign for market recovery. So wanted to show you that so you can see that big change right there. And then where are we at on the big scheme of things? Right, this is going back the last 22 years. Right. This has been that Cromford, these numbers that I've been reciting off to you. Right. These numbers, red in this case is demand, blue is supply. So as you can see, we had demand way exceeding supply all through 03, 04, and it started skyrocketing back up. Right. And then we hit this part right here. 
Remember that crash that everybody thinks happened in 08. We were looking at it well before then. Right? As soon as that delta changed, prices needed to stop going up. Right? That was the speculation that people were looking at that, that uh, created the crash. Right? And then we bounced, recovered. We've gone over this chart before. But what I really wanted to show you is that where have we been here before? All right? We have been here back in 2014. All right, twenty last part of 2013 into the very first part of 20, uh, 2015, but mostly 2014, was the last time we saw a balanced market going all the way back to 2003. All right. And since then, we've had these really – you could almost argue that this 2010 bit was sort of kind of a balanced market because the delta is not really that great, but – I've been, I've been telling people that we need to, if you're looking for a historical example of what the market is like, look back to the way life was back in 2014. Start tracking what's going on back then. All right. A couple things to let you know what's going, what was happening back then is, um, um, the appreciation on houses in 2014 in a balanced market went up 14.6%. Now, in a balanced market, housing tends to appreciate at inflation rate plus. Remember that balanced market inflation rate plus, right? In this case, inflation rate was 1.6, right? So that's a 3% delta between the two. So in the last balanced market we have, housing appreciated 3% over the inflation rate, All right? Lock that away in your head. We're going to be talking about that later. So, and then this is the chart that I want to say. All right, so talking to one of my agents today, and he's got a buyer who wants to buy. He's just waiting for the crash. He wants to buy at the end of the crash. All right, and I told him there is no end of the crash. There is no crash. All right, at this moment, all right, thus being the date of January the 5th, 2023, nobody's predicting a crash except people on websites trying to sell you gold. And a couple dude bros out there who are like really into, you know, those, those, those websites are talking how to pick up chicks and, and make lots of money. And they're saying, yeah, we're buying properties for suckers and stuff like that. What you want to do is you want to live in a van and just travel the world and work out, work remotely from Peoria or whatever the hell you're going to move to. Um, but this right here is a chart for foreclosures per month going all the way back to 2002. If you notice historically, right, there was a good chunk. The average is 100, 804 foreclosures a month, right? We are not back then. Actually, that might just be notice of trustee sales. It would be really great if they had called that out. Redline this as a notice of trustee sales. That's the letter that you get from your bank sometimes it's it's a certified mail sometimes it's hand delivered to you depending on how serious they are saying we are going to foreclose on your house and it's called a no notice of trustees sale here in this state because we're a deed of trust state All right. now if you notice there's a whole bunch of notices that get filed but the blue lines the actual sales these are the actual sales down at the county courthouse Right, that they go up there. There is an auction now, you know, bidding on whatever. All right, that is what actually winds up getting an actual foreclosure. There are all sorts of things that can happen between that. Could be a short sale, could be in deed of lieu. Somebody could call up their local real estate agent and says, Hey, I can't pay my house anymore. I need to sell it in the next 90 days. I got a trustee deed to sale. All right, and Bob's your uncle. It gets resolved in some way besides a foreclosure. All right, and as you can see. Back here in the day, right, we actually broke over 10,000 notices of trustee sales, but we were only looking at maybe 4,000. We peaked on um, back there in 2010, which you think is actually relatively late, all right, but we peaked on actual trustee sales at 5,000. Right? So, and that was all the way back in 2010. All right, then the recovery happens, and as equity builds in your house, as more people have equity in the house, there's less reasons to actually have your house foreclosed on. You sell it. You take the money you have left, you put it in your pocket, you walk away, you live to fight another day. All right. Now, as of December 22nd or December 22, all right, there were 
in the month of December, there was 277 notices of trustee sale made. Right? That is still way under what we have over here. Right? Because that's a thousand mark. 804 looks like, you know, right down in there. We have a lot less notices of trustee sale because people are making their mortgage payment. A Lar large part of that is because of all of the lending rules that came out after the crash and a whole bunch of people convinced Congress, I didn't want to borrow that money. Those evil banks put a gun to my head and made me sign paper and they gave me cash. All right. Now they were, all right. It wasn't my fault I lied to the bank about my employment. They should have known I was lying to them. These are the kind of things that literally happen, which is why you pretty much have to have a colonoscopy now to get a loan, all right? To make sure that people aren't misrepresenting themselves when they're approaching the lenders to get up, get money out of them. Right? Because of those new restrictions on lending, because we got a couple rules in there that says, you know, hey, uh, if you did not, dis you know, discover that your borrower was lying to you, we're going to make you buy the loan back. All right. Because of those rules, people are writing loans that are much, much safer from an investor standpoint which means those people are more likely to be able to pay them. And because they're more likely to be able to pay them, there's less of a chance of having a foreclosure. And this is why we've seen this incredibly low rate of notice of trustee sales and trustee sales, you know, since basically when those rules went in effect, 2012, 2013, 2014, and it's been that low ever since. Now remember that 2014, that was our last balanced market, all right? We still had houses, all right, that where people weren't making payments. We still had houses going to auction, but nowhere near the rate we had seen it all before. Now, if you notice back here in 05, 06, that was the big run up. You could sell a Barbie dream house all right, for cash in a weekend. All right? So that's definitely the area. Uh, and everybody's calling. You get the notice of trustee sale. Your name and phone number and address is blown out to every real estate agent in the valley. That's why your phone suddenly blows up. Hey, uh, notice you missed a payment. You want to sell your house, All right? So the reason why notice trustee sale or actual sales were so low back there in 05 and 06 was exactly that. You didn't have a chance to ignore the problem. You cannot say, I never knew what my house was going to get foreclosed on, All right? If it wasn't the actual certified letter saying, hey, you need to pay your loan. It was the 50,000 freaking real estate agents that were knocking on your door going, hey, do you want to sell this before you go into foreclosure? So when you hit that point, you're looking at 28 people, notice trustee sales. <clears throat> at that point, those homeowners are probably dead, like literally. There is somebody has died in test date. There are no errors. There's nobody trying to, find, uh, trying to look them up or anything, and there's nobody answering the mail. Um, and the banks are just exercising, uh, same with reverse mortgages. Some of those trustee sales could be reverse mortgages where there isn't, the heirs do not want to pick the house up. Right. And that does not necessarily mean that there was an equity still in those houses that went to trustee sales. It just happened. So this is the big number to watch. If you're ever really considered, a, you know, concerned about a crash, All right. If you're concerned about a crash, you want to worry about this thing suddenly shooting up, All right? So the people out there who are talking about, oh, there's going to be a crash coming, just let them know you're going to see foreclosures shoot up when the money really stops flowing, All right? We're not seeing that yet. So, so that is pretty much where we're at right now, All right? Trustee sales are really low. The market is balanced. Interest rates are in the sixes. And in fact, uh, interest rates I was looking at is like 6.6. .6. We're going to be showing that on a previous slide or in a later slide. And uh, just word on the street is lenders are getting phone calls from buyers. I've, I've talked to two brand new buyers in the last two, two weeks. They are all coming online. Um, this is the spring rush that, you know, happens. Seasonality every spring. All right. People suddenly start to want to buy. Funny thing is the sellers aren't going to want to sell until really hit selling until March, April, right around then. 
right? Because they want to get to the house to the point where they can get their kids through the last couple of weeks of school without having to move or anything like that. So we're in this really weird little state that we've been in since I started real estate and we probably will be well past. I'm actually, actually out of it. So, but let's talk where we were at at the end of 2021. All right. Our mortgage rates at the end of 2021 was uh, 3%, 3.05%. And the medium home price was um, 430000 right. Lock those numbers in your mind. Write them down on a piece of paper. We're going to go on. So I made a projection in episode 49. You can go back and listen to it. I, I rewatched it to remind myself of what I was saying. <clears throat> Is that I thought we were going to end... You know, 2022 with a mortgage rate at about four. My rationale behind that was because we were at an inflation rate at that point. We, um, <clears throat> you know, I wrote that one down. Let me let me find this one. I want to say it was like six and change, right? I know I wrote it down somewhere. I don't have it in front of me. You know, inflation was at six per, uh, six percent. Remember, I was saying lenders do not like to lend money at below interest rate or be below the rate of inflation, right? And I told you because of the inflation issue, the Fed was going to raise the rates. All right, I was projecting the Fed to raise the rates like they had before, a quarter here, a quarter there, maybe another quarter and stuff like that. And remember, everybody out there was still talking about how transitory the inflation was. This is transitory. We got two things that are happening with this. We got supply chain hookup, supply chain problems, making things more expensive because there's less of it, supply and demand. All right. And we have a lot of people with a lot of money in their pocket because the federal government has giving out COVID checks. Now, they were giving COVID checks out to everybody whether or not people needed it. All right. You could be a millionaire and you got a COVID check. You could be a retiree and on fixed income and just begin. You still got a COVID check. All right. The COVID checks were to help people who could not work because they lost their job. All right. Because it would be too hard to figure out who gets and who doesn't. They just threw it out to anybody. So at the point they were saying, if we work through the rest of this COVID check money, all right, we get the supply chain hooked, unhooked and stuff like that. Inflation will go down, but we're still going to have to, you know, play around with the rates a little bit. And that's what the projection was. And I followed right along with it. I thought mortgage rates were going to end about four and a half percent. I thought the, I did not think we were going to see the same incredible uh, rate of home, um, home appreciation because of the raising of interest rates. That meant demand would have dropped out. I was expecting that to drop off. We we're actually seeing some numbers there at the end of the year, uh, outside of seasonality that, you know, it was, it, things were starting to slow up. Right. Um, so we were, we, you know, I projected after we we're going to have 12% appreciation, which was half of the previous year. Um, even though there's people out there who are still talking 16, 20, 20 up. All right. And I calculated that, that the median home price would be 480,000. All right. The last number that I, I uh, covered, and I'm not even going to try uh, to get, really get into this, was we had 110,000 closings. All right, that means houses, 110,000 houses transacted or we're going to transact in 2022. Let's see how I did. And this is where I get to say I was wrong. All right, I was wrong. All right, instead of the mortgage rate ending at 4%, the mortgage rate actually ended at 6.62% last week of December. All right, probably different this week because we're, we're into it, but I missed that by 2.6%. All right. I thought the medium home price was going to end at 480, up 12 percent, which it did. All right, it actually hit 480 in May, and then it started backing down off of that. So in a five month period, we went up an additional 12 percent. All right, <clears throat> and then at that, it started backing down. We ended the year at 430 thousand, which is actually down 3% from the previous uh, where we're at. So if you're owning a house at in January of last year, your house is the median home price and everything is now 3.5%. Remember, location, a whole bunch of other things affect your actual value of your house. You can't just calculate off of this thing. Oh, I bought it at this. It's now worth 3.5%, especially if you've done any improvements or anything else. But just know, technically... They're going to they're going to put in the history books that 2022 we actually did come down three and a half percent, right? 
Now, other thing that we had coming on, all right, is instead of 110,000 closings, we only had 80, 989. All right, so that's 81,000 closings happened where I was projecting 110, and other people were projecting more than that. So these are the three big misses that I had. All right, missed a mortgage rate, missed the you know missed the uh, median home price, and missed the closing rate because everything went down dramatically. So rate, right. how'd this happen? How how could you know how could you miss so bad? Well. It's because of these two guys. And guy on the left is Vladimir Putin, first of his name, leader of the Russian people, protector of the, the Slavs, and an all-around general asshole. All right. So in February 2022, remember the two things that were driving inflation at the time. What were the two things that were in, in, uh, driving inflation? Our supply chains were broke. Right. We were having a hard time getting them put back together, right? And there was an excess of, you know, liquidity out there. Everybody had COVID money to spend and were buying stuff, but they couldn't find anything. This guy comes around and in February of 2022, right, he does a, decides to invade his neighbor, Ukraine, which to most Americans, they could not point it out on a map. Hopefully by now you could, but, you know, February 24th, you could not point out Ukraine on a map. So... What people don't understand is because we have this huge interconnected world all right, of supply chains and everything like that. There are things that come out of Ukraine that don't come out, you know, anywhere else. Right? And when those factories that are producing weird things that you don't even know you need gets blown up, all of a sudden you don't get the things that you need that part to make. Really weird case on this. Uh, Ukraine had one of the few factories in the world that actually makes neon gas. You know, for the lights and dingy bars, you know, the kind of places I like to hang out with. <clears throat> they had one of the few factories in town that actually makes neon gas. Now, to you, it's a, it's a Coors Light sign or a Bud Light type, you know, sign up on the wall. Right. But for a chip manufacturer, neon is the gas they actually use to drive the lasers to burn those little semiconductor chips that turns into your iPhone. All right. He blew the factory up. There are a couple other sources and stuff like that, but Ukraine is the major supplier of that. Ukraine and Russia are also one of the major suppliers of wheat. Right? That turns into bread, turns into pizza dough, turns into bad American beer. Seriously. Um, so now that supply... Now they did get that negotiated where they were able to get some of the, the uh some of the, the wheat crop out and that's good. But it still is going to have downstream effects. Fertilizer. Fertilizer across the board, Ukraine and Russia are two of the major producers of fertilizer. Now we're worried about where, whether or not we're going to get enough fertilizer this year. And of course natural gas. Russia supplies the majority of natural gas to Germany. The entire German economy runs on Russian natural gas and now they don't have as much. So Putin shot our supply chains in the head like a horse that you didn't want to put out to pasture. You just want to take the uh, glue factory. That's problem number one. Problem number two that comes in, right, was we got another COVID check. Now, whether or not we needed it, I'll let the politicians figure out. But that next jump of money that comes into the system that makes everybody happy means people take it go out to amazon go out to walmart go out to uh, costco wherever the hell they go to buy more things and now there's still less things there this continues on inflation so the gentleman on the right who you probably don't know or don't recognize this is not the president of the mormon church although he could play that in, an, in a role on netflix his actually name is jerome powell he is the head of the fed Right. He's a vet, Federal Reserve chairman, and the Federal Reserve decides what they're going to do with the federal rates. And he decided to start raising rates, just as we expected. Right. Now, <clears throat> let's watch what happened during 2022 with those current rates. Right. We started off right down here in the threes. And as he raised his rates and they went up, we wound up peaking right here at the sevens. All right, now we've come back down a little bit, but we averaged out of five and a quarter for all of 2022. And 
looking at the charts and stuff about how he did this, he did not raise it a quarter here and a quarter there, maybe 50 on a bad percentage. He wound up raising the federal rate an entire 4.25% over that time span. And he might still continue on. This blew up the, the uh, mortgage rates at a way that nobody projected. And that caused our buyers to suddenly not be able to buy a house. If you've been following this channel and you've been watching my videos, you watch that happen in real time. Right? <clears throat> so now the rates are at 6.5, right? And we'll be bouncing around there. And what is our new market going to be with these higher interest rates? Well, that just means buyers can, can't afford a big as house as they could before. They can't afford the mortgage payments literally because the interest rates are too high so these are the projections that people are talking about right for what we're going to see at the end of next year we got broken down into quarters we got freddie mac fannie mae they are the big mortgage buyer institutions we got the mba which in this case is the mortgage mortgage bankers association all right you have the national association of realtors all right and then we have an average of all four now of these things national association of realtors take everything they say with a grain of salt right but the the mortgage bankers association actually thinks that by this beginning of the second quarter we're going to be down into the fives so does nar all right freddie mac fannie mae they still think we're going to be in the sixes remember since they are actually buying these loans off the back end all right they're going to be a lot more conservative than everybody else all right but Mortgage Bankers Association and National Association of Realtors, they're both calling we're going to be seeing fives. We're still going to continue through sixes for the next rest of the quarter, right? but then we're going to see start seeing those fives come in. Um, so as you can see, averaging them out, the average of it says we break under the six and we start seeing fives again beginning of third quarter. I'd like to see that happen. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was saying that there's an economist out there who was saying that we're going to start seeing fives is based on how they calculate inflation. And because they they calculate inflation annually, right? We're gonna we'll we'll see those early spike ramp up numbers start dropping off, especially come February when you know we're going to start losing the entire Ukraine surge. Right? That will be interesting to track. Um, inflation did end at 2022 with an annual of 8.1. Yeah, there's some other numbers that came out today. Uh, like literally, uh, that means they're going to be adjusted a bit as people go back and look at their look at the charts and everything like that. So let's watch to see what happens on this. But this is going to be your primary driver right now is what happens with the mortgage rates. So next thing we got coming up is a home price forecast. All homeowners, this is what you're worried about. Now, are housing going to go up or go down? All right, Realtor.com, which is probably the least trustworthy source of everybody on here. They think houses are going to go up four and a half. Four, four, you know, I mean, five, five point four. Where did I get four and a half? Dick's less, Dick's, yeah, that word is starting to kick in right now. Um, that is possibly based on the heuristic of home prices always go up, right? Based on inflation. We saw how it went up 3% um, in 2014 with the balanced market with the same metrics that we got going on right now. All right. So that means you're, you're talking, since we went 3%, if we carry that over, you would be, and that means inflation would have to be two and a half, two and a quarter, you know, 2.4. I don't think we're going to get inflation down that much. I really don't. Um, HPES, that is a, a think tank organization. They think that it's going to go up to 2.6, which is actually the historical average. So I most think they just punted on that. National Association Realtor says we're going to go up. Freddie Mac says we're going to go down 0.2%. Uh, Mortgage Bank Association says 0.6. Fannie Mae says 1.5. And Zellman says we're going to go down 5.1. Zellman is a data brokerage think tank all right so we're you know we got the one think tank saying 2.6 another think tank is saying 5.1 all right this is too close to call for me right now and i'm not even going to try to tell you what's going to happen to your home prices all right this year simply for the fact is it's all about that inflation rate as that inflation rate comes in remember buyers all consumers are emotional critters 
All right. The human race is not made up of Vulcans. People make emotional based decisions. All right. If they start seeing a five, they suddenly start feeling better when they're used to seeing sixes and sevens. They start thinking that's an incredible deal. All right. Um, that's just the way you know, the human mind works. So watching the, the interest rates, if it trends down and projects the same way that these people are calling out that we are going to start slight seeing improvement, you are going to see the market improve. All right. Like I said, Anecdotal evidence is the buyers are coming out of the woodwork all of a sudden. They've recalculated. A lot of them are going to wind up, they're going to do an application and get turned down. A lot of them are going to go out there looking for their houses. I just had a conversation with somebody last night. They want a four bedroom house. And when I started telling them where the price points were a four bedroom house, they had to suddenly start changing their, you know, their direction and whatnot. Um, so remember, all, not all these buyers are going to be successful at the end of the day. All right. Some of them are just going to realize what they can afford to buy. They don't want to live at. All right. One of the metrics to watch for this, and we'll see if it comes out in the next couple of weeks uh, from Comfort Report, is the price per square foot for rentals. And will it be cheaper to rent than it will be to buy? That's a very, very big indicator. And we don't have that numbers out yet. So, and with, you know, so that's going to be an, something we want to track, all right? Uh, we do have more apartments getting built, more townhouses getting built, more multifamily dwellings. That is an actual push, both at the national and state level that, hey, suburbs bad, you know, multifamily housing good. Uh, so we're going to see continuing on with that. And we'll see how this turns out. But all things considered, I not going not going to make that mistake again let me tell you what all right um this is where we're at if you were deciding to buy or sell i encourage you implore you really make the decision based on your unique situation and circumstance right uh, if you were transferring your job or your job is transferring and they want you to move somewhere it will probably be time to sell if you are renting right now and you don't you're not too concerned about your landlord raising your rate in the next year or so. Or if you just signed a lease, you might want to consider to stand pat. Let's give it a couple weeks or so. All right. All of our numbers are, are based off of December right now, which is the squirrely month when it comes to real estate. It's a slow month. Let's watch to see if these things start spike up. Right now, we're seeing a good trend line towards it moving. We've hit balance. I'd really like to maintain balance because it makes everybody's life so much easier equally all right but i would like to see activity come up for myself and my friends in real estate all right and i sure as hell would like to see interest rates come down so that's what we're looking at that's what we can hope to see coming up so long story short missed the call putin is an asshole jerome powell he's just doing what he thinks he needs to do i just think he's doing it the wrong way I personally think the Fed is miscalculating how they calculate inflation, and we can go into that for other things. I think the arguments of why they do it wrong is stronger than the arguments than why he does it right. All right, but well, let's see what what happens on this. Um, just this morning, before I was getting this, I noticed um, employment numbers hit weird, and everybody's still trying to figure out what that means to it. All right, um, for some reason. They've been tracking the recession and the concept of recession as you can't have a recession with low unemployment. Um, I'm so old. I remember when I was being told that if the, the, the economy was not growing at at least 2% a quarter and you got to, that was technically a re recession because you have to grow as fast as the population coming in. Of course, that was also told to me by a reporter on a news station who did not like the current sitting president. So who knows? All right. The concept of recession tends to change. All right. <clears throat> that's the, that's the fun. That's the final fun one. All right. Because if we hit official recession, the trick to a re official recession is we need to lower the interest rates. Can you have a, a recession and high inflation? Yes, you can. That's called stagflation. And that is really, really bad. And that's the kind of conversation you have on one of the economist sites, not on one of the real estate sites. So, cheerful news. I want you guys to have a really great weekend. Uh, pass this information along with your friends and family. And, of course, if you know anybody who's even thinking about buying or selling a house, you're right, get, have them give me a call, and I will either talk them into or out of it, depending on their unique situation. So, work your circles. 
watch your pets and animals around the water and have a great weekend. 